everybody, this is Praxis. I mentioned a few days ago that one of the benefits of prepping and preparedness is that when things go kind of sideways or there's an emergency situation, if you feel like you're in a position where you are reasonably well prepared, you don't have to lose your mind as much as, you know, maybe some of the other people are around you. I've been working on this fallout shelter for a while and I'm definitely taking advantage of the fact that, you know, I'm pretty much done and I don't really have to go crazy rushing. Uh, the thing I've been working on the past couple days is this retaining wall. Uh, it goes all the way from there over there. The purpose of the retaining wall is to elevate this so that I can get just more dirt up on the top of the thing here. Uh, but that said, it has a functional purpose, but I also want it to be attractive. And that's what I want to talk about in this video is how to build, uh, well, at least what I think is an attractive stone wall. I love working with uh, stone. It has a feeling of like kind of classy permanence as soon as you put it in there. And, uh, you know, it's just really, it's one of the most satisfying kind of building uh, materials that, you know, I occasionally brush with. And I want to talk a, a little bit about my technique today. Now, oftentimes I think when people uh, think about a stone wall, if they, they see like you got some big stones and here's some smaller stones over here, uh, you would think you want the big, heavy, like, you know, load bearing stones on the bottom and then kind of go up uh, you know, with the smaller stones up on the top. Uh, but you actually kind of wanted to do it a little bit backwards from that. Uh, you definitely don't want to end with small stones on the top because as you're walking around, if you have really small stones on the top and you step on one of them, your weight is going to be able to maybe rock that stone around. So your last course of stones, at the very least, you want to have be pretty big stuff. And that's what I'm going to be putting this uh, guy in uh, right at the corner here. Uh, when I build a stone wall, I usually like to try to take some of the larger stones and put them at the bottom. And then I take some of the medium-sized stones, kind of putting those in the middle, and then put some big capstone pieces on the top to try to just lock the whole thing together. And you're going to get to see me struggle with this thing right here. I chose this guy uh, because it's pretty big. Uh, and uh, it has kind of this, this angled... Uh, face here, which I'm going to kind of flip it over and that's going to, tr I'm going to try to get it to kind of match with the angle of this corner here. Also, this stone, you can't really see it from your angle, but it's thicker on this side than it is on this side. It kind of tapers down to a wedge. And the way that this wall is at present is that this area here is higher than here. I'm not sure if it really uh, shows very well on the camera, but this is about maybe three or four inches higher than this surface. So I'm going to put the thicker part of the stone here and have it kind of taper up towards the end uh, edge over here. Now, I'm gonna, I've done a bunch of stone walls, but that doesn't mean that when I put this thing in, it's going to necessarily work really great. I'm going to kind of have to see with you guys how it looks. But the first step is to kind of put it in there and, uh, and see how it goes. I'm going to roll this guy. And I think what I... I'm probably going to do is just kind of rock it into place. So this is the light end, and this is the fatter end, so this is heavier. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you, you might know that I have an inguinal hernia here, which is a rip in my lower abdomen, which means I, I really need to be careful with what I lift. And when I lift things, I can't, like, spread my legs a lot. I have to keep my legs together when I uh, lift. I'm trying to let the thing heal up. It's, uh, it's been healing pretty well, actually. You're not supposed to be able to heal them on your own. You're supposed to absolutely have to have a surgery for it. But I'm uh, not taking that advice, and I'm seeing if I can DIY it myself by just being careful. And I'm not being careful by splaying my legs out like that. So if it looks like I'm, I'm kind of acting a little bit oddly with this thing, that's why. I'm trying to avoid putting pressure right there. All right, I'm going to kind of pull it towards me a bit. Yeah. Gloves are a good thing when you're working with stone. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's getting there. I think we'll slide it this way a little bit. It's a frustrating thing with having that hernia is like there's so many easy ways of moving this around, but I'm like, I gotta handicap myself by keeping my legs kind of together. Here we go, you're gonna get a butt shot here. Okay. Yeah. Something like that works pretty well. And this stone, it's it's a pretty heavy stone. It rocks a little bit. What I think I'm gonna end up doing is uh, I wanna keep it like this, not like that. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll find some thin stone, slide it under there pack some dirt around it and that'll be just fine. Then you backfill behind you. What really locks it in is when you get plants growing here. The roots grow all around everything and lock the whole thing in. So that's it. It's coming along and uh, I'm hoping oh, another couple days I hope I can kind of get the whole thing covered up because I'd like to maybe plant some asparagus up on the top over here because asparagus doesn't need a lot of watering and I don't want to be watering the top of the fallout shelter because I'm trying to keep this area kind of dry but asparagus would do I think pretty well, even if it's a little dry. So, there we go. That's it. Thanks for watching.